Hey guys, how's it going? So how do some of the bigger YouTubers, people like Casey Neistat, post drone videos on their monetized YouTube channels? I mean, don't you have to have your Part 107 Remote Pilot Certificate in order to be able to do that? Well, yes, technically you do. But I found some information that I wanna share with you guys that might help explain how many YouTube channels are able to post drone footage on them and monetize those videos. So let's get to it. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Russ and this is 51 Drones. Go ahead and click on that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at 51 Drones. So I've been getting a few messages lately asking, hey Russ, when are you gonna put the drone up in the air? When are we gonna see some more drone comparison videos, some testing and things like that? Well, Yeah, so that's why. So it's been like this for a while and it doesn't look like it's gonna let up for a few days. So needless to say, I'm not gonna be putting the drone up anytime soon. So today I just wanna give you a little more information on some of the legality when it comes to flying a drone. So let's go in the house and I'll show you what I found. All right, so a little change of plans here. I got home, had a bite to eat, looked outside and the clouds were starting to break up and the sun is actually out for the first time in like 10 days or two weeks or something like that. So it was pretty depressing. And so what I wanted to do is get a little bit of drone footage. I parked out here next to a construction site. They're gonna be building a new hospital here and they just put up four beautiful, awesome construction cranes, tower cranes. And I wanted to get some footage of them. They're just begging to be photographed and videoed from the sky. And so that's why I drove out here and I figured I might as well just do the video from inside my vehicle since, uh, since I'm out here anyway. And then hopefully at the end, I'll get some footage of these awesome towers to show you as well. So currently when it comes to using drones for the purpose of profit in the United States, the rules state that the pilot in command must possess a part 107 remote pilot certificate if the flight is being used for commercial purposes or in furtherance of or incidental to any business or media service or agency. Now you can go on just about any YouTube channel online and anything that's related to drones or any videos that have drone footage on them and you're gonna find some drone police, you know, letting people know that if this video is monetized, you better have your part 107. Now, although we all love to be told and reminded of what the rules are, <laughs> the fact is these beloved soapbox troglodytes are right. If you have a YouTube video public that contains any footage or photo obtained with a drone, and you are making money from that video with ads placed on it, then technically the pilot of whoever got that footage should have a part 107 remote pilot certificate, much like this one right here. So why then are there literally thousands of monetized videos online where it's pretty obvious, well, presumably that whoever got that footage is probably not part 107 certified. And yes, I am assuming here, but seriously, do you think people like Casey Neistat or any other online content creators that have drone footage have their part 107 remote pilot certificate. And I don't mean to pick on Casey. He's just an easy target because of his influence and everybody knows about him. You know, even all those other channels out there that have drone footage or drone photos or things like that. I mean, seriously, do you think those people have their part 107? Probably not. The fact is the largest majority of monetized drone videos have been recorded and posted by hobbyists or recreational pilots, people that do not have their part 107. So if that's the case, then why don't we see regular articles and news stories and things like that about the FAA cracking down on these hardened criminals? I think this here is why, this right here that I'm about to read you. This is an official document from the FAA and it's from the, uh, let's see, what's it called again? The Flight Standards Information Management System or FSIM, FSIMS, FSIM, FSIMS. Anyway, it's from chapter five, volume 16 of 8900.1. And what this is for is has, it has to do with the enforcement and compliance to regulations of unmanned aircraft systems. Now in this form, the FAA directs its inspectors on how to proceed when investigating illegal drone operations in relation to aviation related videos or other electronic media on the internet. 
it states, and I'll put this up on the screen here so you don't have to watch me read it, but UAS videos in particular are increasingly appearing on the internet. UAS videos may depict aircraft being flown in a variety of classes of airspace and at varying altitudes. Inspectors are to follow the protocol below when receiving notification of videos with potentially non-compliant UAS operations posted on the internet. In all cases, the FAA must have acceptable evidence in support of all alleged facts in order to take legal enforcement action. Inspectors are reminded that, number one, electronic media posted on the internet is only one form of evidence which may be used to support an enforcement action and it must be authenticated. Number two, and this is the most important one, electronic media posted on the internet is ordinarily not sufficient evidence alone to determine that an operation is not in compliance with 14 CFR. However, electronic media may serve as evidence of possible violations and may be retained for future enforcement action. Number three, inspectors have no authority to direct or suggest that electronic media posted on the internet must be removed. And finally, the note here says, electronic media posted on a video website does not automatically constitute a commercial operation or commercial purpose or other non-hobby or non-recreational use. And regarding their philosophy in determining what action to take, inspectors will evaluate the extent of the safety risk to the national airspace system that arises from any non-compliance. An ASI, or inspector, should start by using counseling or an informational letter to advise and educate. So basically what that means is if you're flying illegally, if you're doing something to endanger the national airspace system, the first thing you're gonna get is a letter or contact, email or something saying, hey, you are doing something wrong. You're not just gonna get a fine in the mail for $11,000 and say, stop it. You're first gonna be educated because they're gonna assume that whatever you're doing, maybe you don't know it's illegal. So they're gonna tell you, hey, what you're doing, that's illegal. Then if you continue that behavior, then you're probably gonna get a knock on the door. But anyway, there you have it. Do you need a part 107 to post and monetize drone videos on YouTube? Technically, yes, you do. But will you be charged and fined for monetizing a drone video without having a remote pilot certificate? I'm gonna say the odds are probably not. I'm not saying it's not possible, but it's very unlikely. For one thing, this document right here states that electronic media posted on the internet is not ordinarily sufficient evidence alone to determine non-compliance. And even if it was, I can't imagine myself that the FAA has a bunch of people sitting around in front of computers searching YouTube looking for monetized drone videos so they can hand out these hefty fines. If they are actually doing that, if there are FAA agents looking on YouTube, they're not looking for that. They're not looking for monetized videos. They're looking for flagrant disregard to safety for the national airspace system. They have much bigger fish to fry than somebody making a few dollars on the internet with their drone footage. The FAA's first priority is safety. If someone's flying recklessly and without regard for the law, then yes, they're gonna find you and they're gonna use any posted media as evidence to prosecute. So if you currently have monetized drone footage on YouTube or any other media website, if you have footage, a video, and there's aerial footage or photos on there, should you demonetize them? No, don't get all excited and delete all your videos and just go nuts getting rid of everything because my personal opinion, and I think many others will agree with me, but I think you're gonna be fine. But if the guilt compels you, then by all means, the best solution, my suggestion is, get your part 107. Seriously, it's totally worth it. Now, I put it off for a long time. I wish that I hadn't, but I guess the best part about it as I studied for my part 107 is I learned so much, so much that I didn't know as a relatively new drone pilot. And then the other benefit is, the biggest benefit of having that part 107 besides the knowledge is now you don't have to worry about you know, posting media on the internet or making money from getting your buddy who is a realtor getting footage for him. You know, you don't have to worry about any of that because you have your part 107 certificate. This little blue card right here will open up so many avenues for you as a drone pilot, even as a drone hobbyist that if you're just getting into drones and you're starting to see that, hey, maybe I can actually make some money with this. I'm gonna tell you that probably the easiest way to start making money with your drone is to start a YouTube channel. And that's what worked for me. It might not work for you, but it is relatively easy because I think over the next few years, particularly the next three years, you're gonna see just an explosion of drone pilots, you know, getting real estate footage and, and you know, some of those things that it's just gonna be flooded. The market's gonna be flooded. But if you start right now, get your part 107, start a YouTube channel, 
and and just start posting videos out there, you know, educational videos or entertaining videos, then you're going to be ahead of the game and you're going to start making some pretty cool money with your drone. But the first step, you guys, get your part 107, study for it and get it. So what's my opinion? What's my overall opinion of these rules of uh, not in furtherance of a business? First of all, I think there needs to be some modification to the regulations. Like seriously, what is the harm in earning a little bit of ad revenue from a drone video? Like who does it hurt? I would ask that the FAA consider adding an exception to the no flying for the purpose of furthering a business rule that would exempt online content creators. And the second question I have is, is YouTube really a business? Most people tell you in the comments on your videos, if you have a drone video that yes, YouTube's a business, you gotta have your part 107. But if it is, then the FAA needs to specifically define what is a business. Because if you look it up, in Webster, it's defined as a person's regular occupation, profession, or trade. Now that leaves so much open for interpretation. And for myself, and I think for most others, YouTube is an additional source of revenue. It's not our primary occupation. There's very few people where YouTube is their primary occupation, especially drone YouTubers. You know, it's not a real job. It's like having our very own grown up lemonade stand. So anyway, those are my thoughts on this whole deal. You guys might have different opinions or different thoughts. Go ahead and let me know what they are in the comments. And hopefully we can have a really good discussion down in the comments. I would ask that you share this video on Twitter and Instagram or whatever social media that you prefer so we can bring in more people to have this discussion. I think I've blabbed on long enough now. I'm going to put my Mavic 2 up and uh, get some awesome crane footage. I see they're moving a piece of equipment right now. So I actually have kind of a goal uh, with these things. I have some friends in town that are contractors that are involved with this project. This is a $300 million hospital and uh, they're just starting right now. And it'd be really cool to do a story on one of those crane operators because I really like to know how they work. I do know that it takes 10 semis, 10 semi loads for each of these cranes. And it takes about a day and a half or two days to set up these cranes. So very cool and enjoy the video. I wanna thank you guys for subscribing and for watching today. As always, fly safe and fly smart.